Did I park this far back last night? Really? I know I parked too close to that. I don't remember parking this far back. Maybe my dad moved my truck. I don't know. I don't know how he would have. Thunder. How you doing, my little boy? Are you hungry today? Because you're going to get some chomping. So are you, buddy. So are you, buddy. Where's the other chainsaw? Should be three chainsaws in here. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> Got like three chainsaws in here. All right. Okay, so in the last video, you saw I was looking at my dad's truck, and my dad's truck had a broken window on the driver's side. Exhibit A, grass clippings. Exhibit A, B, the grass is cut. Exhibit C, the lawnmower got into a fight with the truck with a rock. <laughs> yeah, the dad said, yeah, he's like, because my dad's pretty much deaf, right? He's got hearing aids, whatever. Uh, he's got perfectly good hearing aids always sitting on the kitchen table, right? So it's like every time you got to talk, you got to yell at him. That's why I talk so loud is that I mean, you, all my relatives are pretty much deaf. And my ears were clogged for about a month there, so I'm still used to yelling to hear myself. <laughs> but now my ears are completely cleared out. Yay, I know too much information, but I care, right? So anyhow... Yeah, a rock flew and broke my dad's uh, window on the... Yeah, that sucks big time. So yesterday, I didn't get to finish the grass at one place because basically it rained just over those houses. <laughs> it didn't rain in the rest of the entire neighboring town. It didn't rain anywhere all there, but it, it rained over uh, the, the one... The one house where we had to cut, right? And um, <laughs> sure enough, I'm heading back there today, but we got a big ass, some sort of a European willow, if that makes sense. I, I, I don't know if that's the proper tree. It's some sort of a willow tree. It's it's not a, uh, it's, it's like a Manitoba maple, but it's not a Manitoba maple. Like this one, that's a Manitoba maple that's fallen down. Maybe it is a Manitoba maple because that leaf looks the same. Maybe it's a different type of Manitoba maple. I don't know. It's like it's a weird it's a weird tree. It, it, but anyway, it snapped not in half, but it broke pretty good. Got a little bit of a load of metal in the back there, and uh, yeah, so it's a little bit. <laughs> But I hit the potholes there. So yeah, so there's gonna be a lot of saw. I got three chainsaws with me today. Uh, my one of my clients, her husband, when he passed away, okay, um, like he was never the type of guy to be really skilled with tools like he always usually bought the tools for somebody else to do the work for him kind of thing because you know it was just you know but, you know but he would dabble in it to learn how to do it right so he has this chainsaw i don't know when he bought this chainsaw but i know he had it a long time long before i ever worked for them right and that chainsaw i the cs 3900 i dated it to somewhere around the late 90s is when that, that model came out. So it's anywhere between that that and early 2000s, right? So that saw is pretty old. Now, I've worked with it a, quite a bit, but I never had the proper file to sharpen the chain right. But that's probably the original chain on it. And the way a lot of people are with chainsaws, when they don't know anything about them, they think you just buy it and you just keep using it, right? Oh, geez, they're in a hurry. <laughs> Don't know who that was, but... Uh, freaking minivans, eh? Those Dodge minivan people are full of rage all the time, eh? Too much caffeine, I guess. I know what it's like to drive a Dodge minivan, so it makes you rage right away. Like, I'm in a minivan. Get out of my way. Got to get someplace. At Sunday at, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning, I got to be somewhere. <laughs> like, who has to drive that fast? At nine o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, you know what I mean? 
Even my buddy Paul, who's a workaholic, is like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll start around 9.30. <laughs> yeah, it's like, even, even he's not, like, gung-ho on Sunday, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, hopefully I have enough room in the box, because I got to, well, hopefully I don't have enough room in the box, because I got to go see my cousin Ronnie, because he's got a whole bunch of good stuff for me. So, even if I can't get it all today, maybe I get uh, the rest of it, you know, throughout the week or whatever. And then I got another metal pickup. Not a big one. Basically, the son of my... It's my friend's son. It's her son. Whatever. Uh, has a hot water tank and stuff. That's where the hot water tank and that is. And I, I think I know exactly where it is. Is that a snake? I don't know what that was. Uh, and uh, anyway, I got to get that. So I, I can't grab that tonight. And the scrapyard's not open until tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, first thing, I'm getting rid of all that stuff in the back. Um... Because you know what it's like when I load up something in the back of the truck. It kind of tends to stay there until I get a day off type of thing, right? But with the scrap, I like to get rid of it as quickly as possible. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's what my day is going to be. So it's going to be a, probably a fairly long day. Because uh, we got to wait a little bit later. Because it's been raining so much that that grass is going It doesn't get a lot of sunshine in some of the areas. So we know it's going to be wet. So we're going to wait probably until about 10... 10 30 even 11 o'clock to start cutting it and that's only going to take us about two or three hours and then we'll go back to the tree right but uh, we got to get rid of all the branches now the good thing is is we're going to get um probably the wood to to sell right so we're getting paid to cut it up haul it away is that my dad there nope uh, looks like a b40 from the glare there it's not <laughs> um so the point I'm making is, is that um, when we're doing our businesses, right? And uh, how much time? Yeah. Uh, you try to maximize, you know, your your operational costs. Like main operational cost is always going to be fuel, but you still got insurance, repairs. You got all kinds of stuff like that, right? And for me, okay, I'm on the wire still, right? Like I, yeah, yeah. Thunder agrees, yeah. Anyway, uh, there, that's where the divot is that uh, I launched off of with the truck yesterday. Holy, geez, that was hard. that was hard. that was hard on my poor boy. Um, anyway. Uh, the thing is, is that you want to get as much return on investment on gas. Right now, I'm almost 10 to 1 on that $100 of gas. But I'm going to have to get gas probably tomorrow because I'm at an eighth of a tank. Um, and if you can make $10 for every $1 you spend on gas, that's not so bad. My goal is to make like a 20 to 1. So $100 and you make $2,000 off $100 of gas. But you can't do that easily because what you have to plan out is like when I come out to this neighboring town, okay, if I'm going to be working for one client, but it's a short day, I'll pick the other client that's out this town and do the, those two clients in the same day. Lengthens out my day. Sure. Whatever. I'm okay with that. Uh, but you do one trip, right? Now you do that once. It doesn't make a difference. You do that 10 times in a month. You saved, you know, probably 30, 40, 50 bucks of gas right there. You know what I mean? And you've made <coughs> X, Y, D, Z dollars over the amount of gas you spent. So that's what I try to do there. But the other thing is, is to maximize tools. Now, technically today, this saw, which I don't own yet, is probably going to pay for itself today. You know, or just about. I've already made 110 bucks with that saw, and I've only worked it one day. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a bad return on investment that I don't even own the thing yet. You know, like, I still have to work it off because I'm not buying it because I have no money to buy anything anyway. I have no disposable income. All my income goes to is operational costs right now, paying for that trailer. Now, once that trailer's out of the way, uh, I got another $1,100 to pay on in. Uh, then I can put it on the road. 
like like everybody keeps saying well just put the 75 dollar plate on it or whatever it's going to cost and you know then you can go make money with it. but i don't have enough metal like if i had like say 10 metal pickups uh ready to go i would do that because then that would pay for that would pay the trailer down really quick right but i don't have the scrap metal pickups that are big enough yet to justify delaying paying for the trailer you know what i mean and because you got to think about the gas i'm going to spend to go up to get the plate right i'm going to spend probably about 30 40 bucks in gas just doing that right which doesn't sound like much but when you don't have it right at mr adam full stop and oh they're letting people park in the oh that's right Sunday <laughs> um, anyway yeah so that, that's where I'm at like I have no disposable income so I have to be very careful about how I spend anything these days um, till I'm a little more caught up because I still have to consider I got the insurance is coming up for this thing this month next month I can't remember probably if I'm lucky it's in October but it might come out earlier right and that's another 450 bucks that you know is going to set me back right so i've got about half of it saved up right so that's why i don't just throw all my money at one thing at a time oh well, i've got a bike for sale wondering what they want for it <laughs> i'm already in debt i can't afford a bike uh and i got another bike i gotta fix anyway so eventually guys like i'm getting there it's just like anything it's going to take me a couple of years to uh, get like way ahead to the point where when something happens it's not like a big hit all 